be sure to join us on today's episode because I have uh, Frederick Magle with me, one of the most influential Scandinavian composers, and he has some great observations about the Renaissance that we're seeing right now, and also has some principles that uh, we can use to uh, accelerate the classical revival and also especially to understand more the purpose of music in that regard. I will also mention the quick announcement here now that we are having the Beauty Composers Summit on November 16th to the 18th. So if you're early out by uh, seeing this uh, episode, go to togetherforbeauty.com. If you're a, a visual artist or filmmaker, there will be sessions about collaboration so we can have more holistic art experiences and reach a, a wider audience on a deeper level. But of course, if you're a musician and composer, you don't want to miss this. This. So that's the Beauty Composers Academy, uh, Beauty Composers Summit, uh, which also will lead to a Beauty Composers Academy. And uh, it's, you go to togetherforbeauty.com uh, to learn more about that if you are here before uh, November uh, 16th uh, to the 18th. All right, so let's dive into this episode. The world in the West has become increasingly ugly. People are increasingly depressed. And big movements all over the world are now telling modernism, enough is enough. Join us on this podcast as we unite these voices and together recover the beauty of art, music and architecture to uncover its significance for environmental stewardship, mental health, moral goodness, objective truth and a vital spiritual life. My name is Magnus Gautestad, and this is Beauty and the Faith. Greetings and wake up. We are back, and today I have with me a very dear, anticipated uh, guest, uh, Frederick Magle. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. It's a pleasure to be uh, on, on your podcast. I'm really looking forward to it. We, I had to, unfortunately, postpone because I got some kind of cold or flu or, or what whatever but i am even though my voice is perhaps still a little rusty i'm i'm feeling well again i'm glad to hear that we're going to have an important discussion uh, here today about the beauty especially a recover of beauty in the west and there are certain aspects of uh, getting our mind right about these things but there's also a practical aspect of mm -hmm. just helping people to really appreciate that type of universal beauty that that transform uh, and that is uh, a timeless that we really are uh, fighting for here and there are movements all around the world that are fighting for this and see this as a deep human need um, yeah. and uh, we're going to step into an uh, introduction first of uh, uh, Frederick uh, so uh, uh, he his music has united some of Denmark's biggest performing groups and celebrated some of the nation's most significant milestones. As a musician, he has worked across genres and styles, represented his country at international competitions, and forged an individual and distinctive path that remains unparalleled in Scandinavia. Born in the island of uh, Falster, Magle was a child prodigy who was eight when his music uh, performed in public for the first time. He was admitted to the Royal Danish Academy of Music a year early, the only student approved to major in both organ and composition. Grateful but restless, he left after a year and a half, eager to get to work in both capacities. Magle's relationship with the, the, uh, Denmark's royal house was initiated with a work written uh, to mark a visit by Queen Margrethes II and Prince Henrik to the composer's hometown in Falster, uh, Stubbe Köben. Köbing. In 2017, yeah. Magle was appointed to his first official organist position at St. Paul Church in Copenhagen, where he is employed as both performer on organ and piano and composer. He writes music for the church liturgy cycle and presents regular improvisations on liturgical tune and themes on both instruments. And I could have gone on for a long time here. He has engaged in many crossover projects, many creative projects, even uh, has have music out to the people when it comes to a, a hospital project there for people uh, who are in a difficult position in their life. So he is an example of really uh, moving out uh, 
and uh, meeting more the general public with music is something we are speaking about uh, here. And we do see a, a big people movement when it comes to architecture. And I think we're going to see it more and more when it comes to also music and the arts. Um, so, uh, Frederick, let's just jump into some of the more general questions as we like to ask here on the show. So what would more beauty lead to? More beauty would lead to uh, a better life for more people. I believe that. And uh, I know there's a lot, a strong, strong one of the, of course, one of the first places where it can make a colossal difference is in architecture, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not just in architecture. Uh, it's in music too, and in, in all art forms and all sorts of art, and even non-art. Uh, more beauty will lead to a a better life because I believe that beauty uh, in its many forms is such is an, such an integral and such a natural part of the human existence that uh, that we need it and we are deprived of beauty uh, too much deprived of, obviously everything cannot be beauty because there has to be a balance and there has to be a contrast. But if we are completely deprived of beauty, we will de be deprived of something that is important for us to exist and to, and to, uh, and to thrive. Mm -hmm. So I believe that we will have a, um, a, uh, a, a world where people will have better lives. Mm. Well, that's a very good uh, good point about that that need, and also that, of course, in, in music and in uh, in life in general, to it would be like in a type of uh, escapist uh, type of dream almost that everything is going to be pretty everywhere, and that's not what we're talking about here. But we're talking about that in the contrast of everything that 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 beauty um, is something that really improves the life of people, but then. There seems to be something for many, some people, a certain inapproachable uh, distance to some of the the richest forms of beauty. Maybe the some of the most dramatic or the more complex. And I'm really concerned uh, with more the the common man because really, I'm a I'm a common man. I grew up in playing in rock bands, and I didn't know about the classical world. Uh, I just knew that I I wanted to find uh, inspiration and beauty and and feelings and all of this in music. And then over time, I I started to through through education and and uh, to gradually being exposed to it in step by step manners. For example, crossover Ooh. music. I started to kind of wake up my ear. I got trained my ear. I understood it. And suddenly I was into a world and I, I was no turning back. From then on, it was no other style where I could find such rich, meaningful uh, and, and uh, experiences for my soul. So so, so if you, we reach out now to those who are not classical composers here on the show, which is probably in, a, uh, in the audience, which is not probably most of you, how can the common man, the average Joe, the man in the street with minimal classical education in the music learn to appreciate the depth of classical music? Um, I think uh, one of the ways, there are probably more than one way, of course, there usually are. Um, uh, but one of the ways is um, through the medium of uh movies specifically because um even a person who has have no exposure directly to classical music no knowledge of it in in any particular way uh has most likely uh experienced some sort of classical music in movies and the connection the emotional connection between the move, uh, the way it is used in movies, often in a very utilitarian way, but it still has that impact. And and there are many movies. Some, obviously, in in a lot of film and cinema, the music is just kind of like a back background, not meant to be noticed, and just used to enhance whatever feeling is expressed in that particular scene. That is probably not so useful. But there are many other examples. Uh, of movies, 
entertaining movies, also very entertaining movies, where classical music plays a more significant role. And sometimes even the use of specific classical uh, pieces of music, classical works are used to great effect in movies. That is one way into it, uh, which is kind of like a... a, uh, uh, a, a way to subvert because I think a lot of time uh, people uh, who would if they were asked say oh I don't like classical music what they're really saying is I don't really know any classical music and perhaps also a challenge today with classical music is that classical music generally needs a little more time uh, and of, obviously, we live in a in a in an era where uh, uh, social media platforms like TikTok and others uh, are kind of like limiting our attention span, shorter and shorter. I, I heard that somewhere that just a few years ago they talked about how a video had to capture people's uh, the audience attention in like three to five seconds, but that is. So yesteryear, now it's in the first second they actually have mm -hmm. to be captured their attention. Uh, so of course that's a challenge. But with this very, very shortening of attention, I think there is also a great need for something that can be like, take a little more time and, and a break from that. Obviously it will never be possible to reach every person there will be person there will be people who will never be receptive to classical music in any way form mm. uh, and we just have to uh, properly ad admit that probably it will have to be that way but maybe they can still be um, exposed to classical music through movies and other media i think uh, i actually i think uh, that even though a lot of Film music is very generic and very uninteresting in, on its own, even if it works as in the in the context of the film. I think that uh, films, movies have been a a great. Uh, I think they have been a, a part of why we still have symphony orchestras uh, and not just a very few like museum like orchestras, but why there is still a thriving orchestral world and why it has helped sustaining classical music through times where it was very much out of fashion. But I think there can be, I don't think actually classical music is more out of uh, uh, fashion today than it was like 20 years ago. Perhaps it's even, there is even a renaissance. The second thing is I think we as contemporary composers, um, must i'm not telling composers how to write their music and if a composer wants to write only modernistic music fine with me but one thing i want to say to composers is at least don't use don't abstain from writing melodic uh, music abstain from writing "Quote unquote beautiful music." It it can mean a lot of things, but don't abstain from it out of fear that oh I need to it and it is it is uh, I need to make something that is original and some never been done before. And I still, even in the young composers uh, who are studying at the music academies now, I still hear when I talk to them. Sometimes I still hear that among their peers and in, in the academic system, there's still a fear to write melodic music. There's a fear that it is like, and the interesting thing, it, and they try to be original, there's fear that it is old fashioned, but in reality, being completely modernistic is old fashioned because that's kind of like hundred years <laughs> uh, behind. So, uh, so um, I think the way forward is uh, to lose that fear of uh, of writing uh, music and don't be afraid of beauty. On the other hand, embrace it. it. And and I think it is very important to emphasize that beauty does not mean that everything has to be beautiful all the time, but sometimes it can be and to great effect. Yeah, so I think that's a good encouragement. And that also ties into how we can uh, reach the common man because melody and beauty is such universal it's so close to the common sense of musicality which which people have inside them if they approach reality in an honest way uh, and 
uh, I, I like that that encouragement, and uh, also um, that doesn't mean that uh, we have to write beauty all the time. But there needs to be some sort of resolution uh, uh, for people to to find it um, to be beautiful. So I wanted to to comment on something you said and tie it into the next question because you you saw you're seeing that there is some sort of renaissance now compared to what it was 20 years ago. And I also spoke to, for example, Alexander Blesinger talking about that now they have a harder time selling tickets for some modernistic uh, concerts than they used to be. Uh, there are many things in architecture that they're building now that, that they could never have built uh, 10 or 20 years ago. So there mm -hmm. are some things happening. There's something that's growing and it's growing rapidly Across Europe, there's many places in the United States, there are places in South America. There are something that's really happening now. And I just wanted to um, to ask you, what should be prioritized to accelerate uh, the revival of beauty, of, of music, and, and in general, in our generation? What What is most, the one of the most important things that we can do to, to, to cheer on that, which you, you, you mean makes people's lives better? Yes, <clears throat> I think one of the things that has to happen is uh, that uh, I see beauty making inroads into what I would call the established establishment. That is, uh, of course, education, and that is, of course, various grants and 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 because obviously classical music is in a, a difficult position when it comes to uh, existing on on in the market if you if you say mm. it's a, it's hard to exist classical music has a hard time to exist without some kind of patronage and that has basically always been the case so i don't believe that it will be possible to 100% make like a market driven uh, 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 and now i will use the word business model because uh, but but Musicians, composers, everyone involved in the classical music world, singers, musicians, composers, and so on and so on, they have to live. Uh, I think a lot of people then have uh, performing, uh, uh, but we uh, performing uh, careers or uh, uh, has a, a work as a, in some other capacity, have a, a in, in the church and, and other wares. But I think it's very important that there are build more opportunities um, because even though I do see that melodic uh, classical music, beautiful classical music, if you if 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 you uh, if you will say that that way, are slowly also making inroads and being more and more accepted. Where just like 20 years, 20, 30 years ago, it was almost like sacrilege to to do anything that was not hardcore modernistic and you would be looked down upon uh, from the establishment but slowly it is being more and more accepted also in uh, traditional academia but not 100 percent yet we're not there yet where it can like be completely accepted it's still it's still it's if something is too beautiful it's still looking people within the system, if you like, uh, within the established uh, music uh, critics and uh, people who are in the foundations and, and so on and so on. Um, they are still looking upon it with some skepticism. Mm -hmm. But there are so one thing, one way to do is to make more opportunities. I know that a lot of musicians, singers, musicians, instrumentalists and so on they really enjoy playing music that has melody that has beauty that has these traditional cl classical uh but in new in new ways so it's not we are not talking about pastiche in any sort of way you can do that if you want that's fine with me you can do pretty much anything but we are talking from my perspective i'm talking about taking standing on the foundation of like thousands of years of uh and if we simply say that beauty and melody and and uh, these kind of, and, and rhythm and and uh, rhythms that can be experienced uh and are not too contrived that actually 
these things are so integral. So we are so we're not just standing on thousand years classical music history. We are maybe standing on on the whole human history. So, but more opportunities. And uh, and more things like what you are doing here with the uh, with this project. These are things that can accelerate it. We need to be to establish that there are opportunities, uh, also for uh, 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 for uh, classical composers, musicians who who wants to do this, because the economy, if you could so to speak, in in the classical music is not particularly one of finance. It's more like one of prestige. I, I heard one, I can't remember his name, he, he expressed it in that way. And it made perfect sense because it is a kind of like a prestige. Is uh, If in classical music, it's very much about respect and prestige, how things are. So if there is a a lack of prestige for cla for melodic classical music, or at least some kind of barrier or skepticism towards it, then making more uh, opportunities that could make a big difference. Hmm. I, I I think you are on to many good things there, Frederick, uh, uh, about uh, taking action and being proactive in accelerating the hmm. revival, and not just sit back and hope that somebody will take care of it. Hmm. Uh, this uh, this is a time for those who are entrepreneurial and for all of those artists which have which are creative and that is basically all artists are creative and that means we're also creative problem problem solvers and if we can come together and we can build initiatives that will yeah both um fuel the marketplace in different way that will help to uh uh, create alternative educational system while we are waiting for the institutions to catch up. You know, it, that's, yes. that's that's how it is in all uh, areas uh, because it's more heavy and bureaucratical and all of these things. That's just reality. So in the meantime, now we do see uh, an increasing um, wish to see more beauty in architecture, for example. That's very clear. We see it in uh, the visual arts with, for example, the Art and Rural Center making museums all over the place. And also then in music, things are uh, changing here. So um, and so I wanted to uh, encourage everybody who is listening now, if you are a, a composer uh, and uh, you are maybe fear, you have fear or your mind is not in the place for your, your best um, uh, creativity, we're having a, a summit in two days. So if you're listening to this right away when we uh, and deliver it, We'll have a summit from November 16th to the 18th where Frederick, he'll be talking about storytelling in music. And we, we're going to look at specific solutions to composers of new beautiful music today. So this is not a generic thing about some basic music theory you learned 10 years ago or some little new marketing gimmick. This is deep uh, uh, solutions to uh, prevailing problems that we do see from going from being underappreciated to actually having your music play with orchestras or reach the wider uh, people on, on a deeper, more profound level. So you can go to togetherforbeauty.com and get your free ticket for that if you just listen to it. And uh, um, Frederick will be there as well. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, very much. That would be a great event. Uh, so uh, we also want to briefly touch on if you see any connection between beauty and faith because it seems like even in the times of where it has been the least beauty in the western world there's always been parts of the church who has just stood on some sort of principles that that beauty is important there is something about a spiritual aspect to this as well do you want to just comment on is there any connection between beauty and faith at all well there well there certainly certainly is and uh <clears throat> I think this is one of the, uh, the, the, <laughs> the places also where we can be happy that the church moves very slowly. So that even though the modernism has, uh, has entered the church in many church buildings, there still, there still has to be this uh, beauty. And, and obviously, uh, uh, if we look at it in that way, we can see whenever people need to connect spiritually and to to feel something deeper we need beauty you cannot do that of course you can hear the the gospel anywhere in a darkened room anywhere that exists everywhere but uh 
the the church settings including very much the church music in order to heighten that feeling in order to that express that feeling the beauty is an integral it's a necessity actually in especially in some kind in in a, in a, to to kind of like connect that to to enhance that uh sometimes i feel the important thing in the church is of course the message is the word of god it is the gospel and the music in a church in a way functions in the same way and Please excuse if this sounds sacrilege. It's not meant that in any way. But now we are talking practical use here. Yeah, yeah. we are practical. We are use, We have to talk of things in practical terms. Yeah, in the church, the music in a way functions in the same way as music functions in a film. It has to enhance the word. It has to enhance the experience and 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 make people think and make people experience the gospel and make th- people experience the words of the bible and uh and it does that by use of beauty in in more or less uh, uh, uh in more or less uh, direct or or intentional ways but simply this the, the beauty of the church music the the power of the church music and then also of the organ and these extremely powerful is very very potent way to go in and make people open themselves up and in a way the the enormity of of the church music also can make people feel vulnerable in a say but in a good way in a way that they become vulnerable and open themselves up to that so beauty melody and and kind of like that church music tradition which has not been changed notice how um in the classical sense of course there has also been like the, the worship music and the contemporary christian music which is something else we can talk about but that is but but in the classical church music has not significantly changed there may be a little more dissonance. There might be more, more modern uh, uh, character in some parts of church music, but overall, beauty and melody is still integral and necessary part in church music. And I think that's a kind of like a proof because if using strictly modernistic music could in any way uh, have the same effect. And ha- on people and open people up in the same way and open their minds and their hearts in the same way as beautiful music or classical I- inspired music, melodic music, I would say, tone music, then that would have happened because there has been like kind of like a hundred year modernist movement, which has influenced church architecture. But church music has remained, or, although, of course, being influenced by by and it's not doesn't sound the same today as maybe sound 100 years ago but it sounds very much the same i think that is a very very good proof on on just this is kind of like well you could see and there is a reason why we are still having beautiful music in the church so the church has in a way been the uh, caretaker the curator of beauty in music throughout the um, uh, modernistic period. Hmm. Well, that's uh, definitely given me something to to think about there. So the church has been the caretaker, and it's kind of a a, a proof there. Uh, if you live by certain t- timeless principles, that the 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 music is there to to enhance some sort of objective uh, truth, and then um, and you want to do that in the most excellent possible way. Uh, through hundred years of uh, pressure from all kinds of angles, mm. with also many of the, the musicians that are working also in churches and then performing outside it, yes. uh, it just Indeed. have not broken through because it it doesn't to to reflect something ob- objective and to create that sense of open the hearts and the minds for those that spiritual uh, messages, for example, of truth, it Indeed. just have not been uh, welcomed by by the. Op- 
vast majority of churches because it's not effective in that way, just from a pr pragmatic uh, point of view. So there we could yes. see, say just objectively that there is something less effective with some of that music, which lacks a certain uh, form of rhythm or melody or beauty or tonality to it when it comes to uh, spirituality. And I think it's been a good uh, uh, evidence uh, of that and, and something we can also keep in mind for those who are musicians here or work in other fields that might want to, t you know, that has spiritual convictions and want to live out on them in the real world. I think you can meditate a little bit on that experiment, uh, so to speak, between the church and society. Um, and I also um, wanted to mention uh, on that uh, regard um, that uh, uh, we will be diving more into questions about modern music in the churches and there's a kind of this uh, worship war for those who don't know uh, we have a lot of different music that's especially since the 70s has started dividing uh, the, the church in many ways and now in this time of renewed hope uh, renewed focus around beauty we have another podcast called SDG Music Radio where also you can now um, very soon see uh, uh, an interview with frederick so if this is a, an area which interests you uh, then i would encourage you to also go there we will be diving more deeply into some of these uh more, more you know the aspect of, of spiritual music and and um i also wanted to just encourage those who are listening now who are maybe not regularly going to to churches uh or going to churches that has a, a beautiful music uh to if you can't find uh that music that transcending music around you um visit a church and sit down if you haven't done that for a while uh i would say that was my way into the church after uh having this almost awakening of classical beauty and coming back from the united states to norway and i was going to the concert halls but it was you know it's so fleeting it, you know it was so difficult for me i felt so lost i felt a bit stupid sitting there uh, and then i just went to the church and there i found everything from classical to more simple hymns and psalms. So uh, if you want to enrich that part of your life, which can really enrich also your appreciation of, of arts and architecture and all these things, at least it did for me, I would encourage you to, to find one of those beautiful churches, which will probably also have beautiful music in it. Now, uh, we will go to a wonderful Frederick, and we will go to a close here now. And I just want to to, to ask you, Frederick, I know that you are uh, you're serving musicians with uh, sheet music. You are doing many things uh, uh, in an organized uh, way. How can the audience find out more about your work and your services? Well, uh, the the best place to start is to go to my website. Uh, is uh, www.magle.dk. And from there, there are both links to all my social media, but you can also go uh, to my uh, to the sheet music page there where I have uh, uh, a list of music that has been published. Both uh, I'm publishing a lot of my music uh, myself on my new publishing house, but I also have been have had uh, works published by major uh, uh, old uh, traditional publishers. And you can find there and that's a very good start. And there, from there, you can you can find all the things, my YouTube and my Facebook and Instagram and so on. Well, thank that you very be, much. That would be my recommendation. Wonderful. Very concrete. So it's uh, just his last name, Magle, M Magle, and then DK, like they, they do in in uh, in our dear neighbor, uh, Denmark. Uh, yeah. I'm a Norwegian, by the way, for those who are just tuning in. So we, we are in the Scandinavian corner over here today. Uh, so... Frederick, it's been so wonderful. I know you have many things going on. I'm so grateful that we could take this time and talk about this and that you also see that Thank there you. is a renaissance happening right now and that through proactive actions and initiatives like this, like the Together for Beauty Marketplace app, we're using to connect people together, uh, to start these discussions, uh, to bring to God, together entrepreneurs, we can make a tremendous difference right now this is the yeah. time this is the time if you want to see more of this in your life uh to to step up and find a way to get engaged so again frederick thank you so much and for our thank audience you. have a beautiful day you too thank you